Hello, I am Jerry with RetroZone Inc. We are one of the largest motor suppliers for dampers, and this video is directed at our RZ31, which is our most popular uh, spring return damper motor, very often used to replace the Honeywell M847D motor, which we see a lot of, but there are many other motors that feature what we call a common footprint. Here's, here's a Honeywell right here, you can see that they both actually have the same mountings uh, and they all will interchange. So having said that, uh, before you uh, uh, get into doing this, make sure you have a low voltage system. Almost any damper system now that has some sort of zone control panel like this and uses small wires are almost universally 24 volts AC. However, there could be some 110 volt motors out there. If you see black, white, and green wires, just be aware of that and do whatever you need to do to ensure your own safety if you are unsure on that matter. Now, I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to replace uh, the motor, in this case, on an old Honeywell damper. Uh, now, this is not what you're seeing in the field because yours is obviously built into a duct system. There's no need to remove the damper. You'll have tape, mastic, this one's been pulled out. Here's the old Honeywell motor. You simply loosen the 3 16 uh, Allen connector to it. The motor comes right off. Our new motor actually fits, turn it the correct way, right back on. The cover's loose on this right now, and then it's simply a matter of retightening it. Well, it's not quite that simple, but almost. Because once you have the old motor off, you do need to make sure that the damper turns freely. And this is perhaps the biggest uh, question that we get is how do you know that the damper blade is in the right position prior to reinstalling the motor? Well, uh, these motors turn counterclockwise to close typically. And so, if I turn it all the way clockwise to open, and then I mount the motor, then I should be in good shape, okay? That should be the correct orientation. Or what I can do is actually power the motor. Go ahead and connect power, 24 volts AC. And by the way, there's no polarity. You can't get these wires backwards. Go ahead and connect it and power it. If you're unsure of power, that's why we supply you with our LED test light so that you can just touch the wires. If the light lights up, you've got 24 volt power. And uh, you can actually power the motor, which should be in its closed position. At that point, you would rotate the damper blades all the way closed and then mount the powered motor on here, knowing that the blades are closed, the motor's closed, and then as soon as uh, power is disconnected from it, the damper will open up. So round dampers, which we see many of as well, uh, maybe are a little bit more of a challenge, but still sort of the same, the same way. Now this is, of course, buried into your duct system. You don't want to open it. You don't have a way of looking in there um, to see the blade. So counterclockwise, again, closes the damper and this is important, a quarter turn, 90 degrees, opens it up. So when trying to determine where exactly to position that blade, you could take a Sharpie, rotate it all the way counterclockwise, make a small mark on the shaft, go 90 degrees forward, and then that is where you would basically mount the motor and, and lock it down with, with a good assurances now you, that it's in the correct position. Now you could do just like the rectangular damper, you could do the same thing where you rotate it all the way clockwise until it hits its internal seals. You could then power the motor. And this is maybe a little more accurate way of doing it because you know the blade's closed, you know the motor's closed, and then mount the two of them together at that point, knowing that you, you really have it in the correct orientation. So that's another way to do it. Now, 
You can also drill holes in here where you can actually look in there. You can disconnect ducts. There's other ways to do it, but usually they're not uh, necessary. These are all very low pressure duct systems. And with foil tape, you can easily seal an access hole or some sort of visual port to do that. So fear not, it's not like drilling a hole into your, your plumbing. Uh, this is all air operating at a fraction of a PSI and it's very easy to uh, seal up. So uh, when it comes back to wiring, it's really usually just a matter of connecting the two wires that you disconnected. Again, there's no polarity. You can't get it backwards. Um, and I want to reassure you too that on these spring return type motors, you're not going to damage them. If you have them on there oriented backwards, if you don't have them adjusted completely the right way, whatever the case may be, they may not open or close all the way, but you're not going to hurt the motor. So go ahead and just give it a whirl and see how it, uh, see how it goes. Okay, this is a little closer look at changing the motor. There's going to be an Allen uh, a bolt here, and it could also be a very small uh, Allen bolt actually down in the collar down here. So be aware of that. But to change this motor, disconnect it, loosen it, pull it out. If it's sticky on there, you may have to use a little WD-40 or some kind of lube. New motor is going back on, same way. Now remember the part where we need to, in this case, it's a normally open damper, so we're gonna open the blades. Gonna put it on there, and we're simply gonna reattach it. Now, occasionally I'll get a call from the field that the motor's not fitting on there very easily. Just be aware that if there's a little Allen uh, piece in here or this Allen bolt, make sure it's backed out far enough. It's not easy to see, and I've done it myself where you look, you think you're clear, and it won't go on. Also, these are aluminum shafts on these Honeywell dampers, and they can get burrs on them from the old motor, so don't be afraid to take a little sandpaper and sand those smooth, and then it should fit right, right on. Tighten it up, and you're done.